Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back for another edition of Health Class. Today, pag-uusapan natin ang isa sa mga common na female reproductive conditions. Isa sa mga common female uterine conditions sa buong mundo. And yes, women's health or women's reproductive health matters. Pag-uusapan natin ang myoma or commonly known in the medical world as uterine fibroids. Bakit nga ba common ito? Isa nga ba itong type of cancer? Well, malalaman natin ang mga sagot. Kaya, just keep on watching. My name is Ryan and I'm specializing in diabetes, men's sexual health, alcohol and drugs, primary care, and medicinal cannabis. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, women's reproductive health and women's health matter. Kaya pag-uusapan natin ng isa sa mga common reproductive health issues sa buong mundo. Ito ang myoma or uterine fibroids. Tinatawag din itong leiomyomas. Isa ba itong type of uterine cancer? Ang sagot, hindi. Myoma or uterine fibroids are non-cancerous growths in the uterus that can develop during a woman's childbearing years. Hindi po ito isang cancer. Ito po ay isang abnormal growth sa uterus. Mahahalin tulad ko ito sa mga polyps or small cysts. Although, ang fibroids ay pwedeng lumaki. Na pwedeng kasing laki ng small watermelon. Nagiging at risk ang mga kababaihan from puberty or kung kailan sila nag-uumpisang magmenstruation hanggang sa ma-reach nila ang menopausal period or yung period na hindi na sila pwedeng mabuntis. At ang mga obese or overweight. Mayoma or uterine fibroids are extremely common. In most cases, these small non-cancerous tumors are harmless and do not require medical treatment. However, if they grow big or large, leading to multiple issues, then treatment is needed. Or if the fibroids are too many in numbers, or if they start pressing against another organ, then a treatment is needed. And speaking of treatments, maraming treatments ang myoma or uterine fibroids. Dito tayo magfo-focus today. Some of the common signs and symptoms of myoma or uterine fibroids are heavy menstrual bleeding that can lead to anemia due to blood loss, constipation, lower back pain or abdominal swelling, pain during sex, urinating, and or defecating issues. So, paano nga ba nagkakaroon ang isang babae ng myoma or uterine fibroids? First and foremost, the exact cause is not known. But, studies suggest genetics and prolonged exposure to estrogen may increase the risk of myoma. So, genetics, it runs in the family. And it says, prolonged exposure to estrogen. Ang estrogen ay isang female reproductive hormone na tumataas ang bilang sa katawan ng isang babae pag may heavy menstrual bleeding or pag may menstruation. And remember what I told you earlier, na isa sa mga signs and symptoms ng myoma ay heavy menstrual bleeding. This also means na pag may menstruation ang babae, or pag ang menstruation ay very heavy, nagkakaroon ng increased levels of estrogen. At nagkakaroon ng high risk ang babae na magkadevelop ng uterine fibers due to high levels of estrogen. Ang estrogen nagre-regulate ng menstruation. It is a hormone that is important in maintaining the female sexual and reproductive health. 
it is needed in puberty, menstruation, pregnancy, and bone strength amongst women. And gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, we will be discussing about treatments. Magpo-focus ang discussion natin about treatments kasi napakaraming options. Nagdidepend na lang kung ano ang suitable options or treatments for you. Una na dyan ay ang mga medications such as painkillers kasi nakakaranas ang mga babae ng abdominal pain. Pwede rin ang mga birth control pills to control heavy menstruation. GNRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. They block the body from making estrogen and progesterone hormones. As a result, menstruation stops, fibroids shrink in size, and anemia gets better. Pwede rin ang GNRH antagonists. Kung kanina agonist, ngayon naman ay antagonist. The difference with agonists is these don't shrink fibroids but can be used long term. Naririnig nyo na ito kasi napaka-common ang intrauterine device or IUD. It relieves symptoms of heavy bleeds or menstruation. It prevents pregnancy but it doesn't shrink fibroids. Pwede din ang tranexamic acid or transemic acid. It's a non-hormonal medicine only taken on heavy bleeding days. Pwede din gamitin ang MRI or Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It used to help locate fibroids then uses sound waves into the fibroids to heat and destroy them. Ito, common din ito, uterine artery immobilization. It uses embolic agents that are injected into arteries that supply blood to uterus. These agents cut off blood flow to fibroids, causing them to die. Ang dugo nagkikerry ng oxygen at para mabuhay ang mga tissues and cells, kailangan nito ng oxygen. Pag walang dugo ang napupunta sa fibroids, namamatay ito kasi wala silang oxygen para mabuhay. Pwede din ang radio frequency ablation. It uses radio frequency energy to destroy fibroids and shrink the veins that carries blood to them. It has similar principle as the uterine artery embolization. They prevent the blood flow to the fibroids para mamatay ang mga ito. You need to consult your doctor or gynecologist. Pwede din ang laparoscopic myomectomy. They make small cuts in the abdomen to remove fibroids in the uterus. Meron ding hysteroscopic myomectomy. This is an optional procedure if fibroids are inside the uterus or what we call submucosal fibroids. Meron sila mga special tools that are placed through the vagina and cervix then into the uterus to get rid of the fibroids. At meron tayong endometrial ablation. A device is used or inserted into the uterus. Then it gives off heat, microwave energy, hot water, cold temperature, or an electric current. After inserting, this then destroys the tissue that lines the inside of the uterus. The only disadvantage is that you aren't likely to get pregnant after the procedure. The twelfth option is abdominal myomectomy. This is for very large deep fibroids. Larger cuts are made in the stomach to gain access to the uterus to remove fibroids. Then the most common surgical option which is hysterectomy. It is the surgical removal of uterus. It remains the only proven permanent solution for uterine fibroids. Kasi, pag wala ng uterus, there will be no more fibroids ever. The only downside is that you won't be able to get pregnant. Kasi, wala na ang uterus mo. A large fibroid cluster can measure to more than 8 inches in diameter or larger, which is about the size of a small watermelon. There you go everyone. Napaka-importante ng topic na ito. 
kasi napaka-common ng uterine disease na ito amongst women. We are celebrating women's health. Studies say too much red meat, too much alcohol consumption, and being vitamin D deficient can lead to uterine fibroids formation. Stay away from stress kasi when you are stressed, the body releases cortisol hormone which then increases the level of estrogen in your body. And as you know, the higher levels of estrogen in your body, the higher risk of developing fibroids in the uterus. Mag-ingat palagi at laging kumonsulta sa inyong mga doktor. Thank you for watching. I shall see you again on my next health class. Stay safe and be healthy.